Do you know what direct memory access is, or DMA for short? Are you looking for an easy way to use direct memory access on a microcontroller? Maybe you're looking for a way to read and write memory on a microcontroller without using the CPU. This video will answer both why the DMA is a great way to read and write to the memory, as well as how to read and write data to the memory using the DMA. The DMA is a peripheral that can move bytes of memory within the system memory and without using the CPU. Because the DMA process does not need the CPU to transfer data, the CPU can operate in idle or doze mode, which allows the system to save power while the DMA is moving bytes of data. Furthermore, the DMA is able to use other peripheral alerts to start and stop the DMA process, meaning that the CPU does not need to come out of these power saving modes even to initiate moving the data in the first place. This tutorial will show you how to use your microcontroller to receive a byte of data from a UART serial communication connected to a serial terminal on a computer. Once that byte of data has been stored in the default memory location, we will use the DMA to transfer that byte of data to a different area of memory and then send it back to the serial terminal. We can initiate this transfer based upon the UART flag bit so that the CPU does not need to tell the DMA when to start and stop. While this may seem simple, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up the DMA with the help of MCC. If you want to see a more complete project using the DMA, the video description includes a tutorial showing how to use the DMA in a full Leiden application. This tutorial can also be found on mplabexpress.com's example page. We are going to start in Microchip's online IDE, MPLAB Express, and will have open Microchip's code configurator. Let's start the microchip minutes timer and get programming. In the system module window, we want to change the system clock from external oscillator to HF int OSC or high frequency internal oscillator. This will make sure that the UART's baud rate stays at 9600 once set. If you ever notice your baud rate randomly changing, make sure that the system clock is set up this way. After that, we need to pick a UART and DMA module by double clicking on each under device resources. We will use the UART to communicate with the serial terminal on our computer and to provide bytes of data for the DMA to transfer. Next, let's configure the UART peripheral. Check both the transmit and receive boxes so that a peripheral is set up to both transmit and receive bytes of data. This way, the microcontroller can communicate both directions with the serial terminal. Check the redirect STDIO to UART to allow us to use printf and other standard IO library functions. The baud rate is already 9600, so we do not need to change it. Under Project Resources, click on DMA to switch to the DMA configuration window. Under the DMA CON0 register, we want to enable the DMA as well as enabling SIRQEN, which is the register responsible for telling the DMA which peripheral interrupt to pay attention to in order to start transferring data. We do not need to configure anything in the CON1 register at this time, so continue down to set the destination source address or the first address the DMA will transfer data to. I am writing to a file register because it's a safe area of memory to rewrite. This is as opposed to the EE problem, which is generally meant for read only, and the program memory, which is meant for holding specifically the program to run the microcontroller. I chose 0x0103 for no specific reason, and you should be able to write to any of the file registers. 0x0103 is a 16-bit address, but the registers each hold 8-bit values, so we need to write 0x01 to the high register and 0x03 to the low register. Lastly, we will only be reading and writing 1 byte per transfer, so under the destination source size, we can set the count to 1 byte. A quick note, it is possible to move more than 1 byte per DMA message, just make sure that the destination size and source size are evenly divisible. If not, it will throw the DMA counters off and the next DMA process will be off by the leftover amount, unless you clear the counters. The SIR QEN dropdown window gives a list of all the possible interrupt options for triggering the DMA to start transferring bytes. These include peripherals like timers, the I2C and UART serial peripherals, or a comparator. For a full list, check out table 11-2 interrupt vector priority table in the PIC 18F25K42 datasheet. Since we are using the DMA with the UART1 module, we will choose the U1RX, or whenever the UART receives data. The next value we need to set is the memory address where the UART stores data by default, which defines the source for the DMA. To find this address, we need to check the datasheet by returning to the IDE window and looking for the PDF icon in the dashboard section. 
The UART receives data into a buffer, so this register can be found by searching for U1RXB in the datasheet using Control F. This finds the special function register table and the address of U1RXB, which for this part is 0x3dE8. Return to the MCC configuration window and as before write 3D to the high register value and then E8 to the low register value. The source value for this tutorial is also only one byte long, so write one for the source address size. The last thing we need to do in MCC is to set up the pins to communicate with our computer serial terminal. All Microchip Express development boards come with a special CDC link in the firmware that allows communication with the computer terminal over UART. I found which pins the PIC 18F 25K42 Express board used by finding the data and clock pins that ran between the microcontroller that programs the PIC 18F 25K42 and the K42 on the Express development board itself. These were RB6 and RB7. Therefore, I set TX to RB6 and RX to RB7. After this, MCC is completely configured, so we can generate the MCC config file and return to the MPLAB Express online IDE. While we do not need to write any lines of code for the DMA to work properly, we do need to write a couple lines to tell the microcontroller how to interface with the serial terminal. The first thing we need to write is an 8-bit value stored at the register 0x0103, or whichever register you decided to use as the destination address for the DMA transfer. The next line we will write is more so to test whether or not the terminal is working by writing a welcome line outside the while one loop. Within the while loop, first call the function getch, which sends the program into a loop waiting for data to come across the UART communication line. Once the byte is read, the DMA source flag notices the RX buffer has a byte of data and transfers it to the file register. Therefore, the only other line of code we need to write is put ch which includes the variable you stored at the file register location. I use the variable D. We can stop the microchip minutes timer and take a look at the results. I am using CoolTerm, which is a serial terminal that you can find the link to in the description to this video. As you can see, when I send a character through USB to the microcontroller, the UART receives it, the DMA transfers it, and the PUTC8 sends it back to the terminal almost instantaneously. One note on debugging and file registers, if you are curious and want to see the addresses of the file registers and how they are changing, you can open up a debugger even in MPLAB Express. Make sure that you are using a programming debugging device connected to the IDE, such as the Picket 3. But all you need to do after it is connected is to choose file registers by finding the window tab, then pick memory views, and lastly file registers. Thanks for watching. If you want more informative tutorials, check out the other Microchip Minutes, as well as subscribing to Microchip's channel on YouTube and our page on Facebook. Have a great day.